Good morning and praise the Lord. What a beautiful day. The Lord has sent the sunshine and the radiant beauty of the sunshine to bless the occasion. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it and worship him. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today on this most joyous occasion to celebrate one of life's greatest moments, the joining of two hearts, and to give recognition to the beauty and the worth of love in marriage as God planned and instituted it. The marriage covenant is regulated by God's commandments and blessed by our Lord Jesus Christ and to be held in high honor among all men. It is not therefore to be entered into lightly or unadvisedly, but reverently, soberly, and in the fear of God. May we joyfully witness the union of Pinto Samuel and Tinsey Thomas in holy marriage and support them with our prayers, presence, and best wishes. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I. Since the bride and the groom are seated, we all can be seated. Thank you. Greetings to all in the precious name of our resurrected Lord and Savior, <clears throat> Jesus Christ. I am Joyce Sam, and in constant fellowship with the saints at North Richland Hills Bible Chapel, where Tinsey Thomas, her parents, and her brother and family are in constant fellowship with the saints. Therefore, our relationship precedes all other relationship in Christ, and I have the distinct honor this morning with you all to welcome you all and to introduce them. Dearly beloved in Christ, dear family members and friends, we have come together in this beautiful place this morning to witness and share in the joy of the solemnizing of the union uh, of Pinto Samuel, son of Mr. C.T. Samuel and Mrs. Walsama Samuel, residents of Gudalur Nilagiris, Tamil Nadu, India, with Tinsey Thomas, daughter of Mr. Thomas Matthew and Mrs. Monikuti Thomas, residents of Irving, Texas, US, in holy matrimony in the presence of a holy God. I have known the family of Tinsey from my teenage years in New Delhi, India, where she spent much of her uh, childhood in fellowship with the saints at the Gospel Hall, New Delhi. She accepted the Lord as her personal savior at the age of 11 and got baptized and added to the North Dallas Bible Chapel in 2005. Thereafter, she has continued in steadfast fellowship with the saints at North Richland Hills Bible Chapel. The saints at the Gospel Hall Assembly who have cherished and witnessed this young girl now into a, grow into a fine young woman in the fear of the Lord and along with the saints here in Texas and across and family have been praying to prepare Tinsey as a helpmeet for a man in his own time and in his own will. And God, in his own time, 
has brought forth Tinsi to Pinto by burdening the hearts of the dear ones to consider this union in, and trusting in the Lord, they have agreed upon this marriage. Pinto Samuel has spent much of his childhood in Gudalur, Tamil Nadu, India, with his, where his parents received the Lord as their savior, and God added to the Bethel Brethren Assembly at Gudalur, Tamil Nadu, India. Pinto also, at his young age, received the Lord Jesus as his personal savior, and God added to the Bethel Brethren Assembly on April 29, 2006, and was in constant fellowship with the saints there. He moved to US in September of 2019 in, to pursue his academic studies at the Day Springs Bible College and Seminary at Mandolin, Illinois. His parents, due to unfortunate circumstances, are unable to be physically present here, but are witnessing this along with his grandparents and other family members virtually at their hometown in Gudalur, India. His dear uncle and his wife, Mr. Philip Nainan and Mrs. Sophie Nainan, who are his local guardians in the US, uh, have gracefully made their presence here with prayers along with other family and friends. As the Holy Scriptures has been quoted here by our dear brother here, uh, it is said in the scriptures, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. He has already mentioned it is God planned and God ordained marriage union. In, again in the scriptures, and the rib of which, and the rib which the Lord ha God had taken from man, made he a woman and brought her unto the man, Genesis 2 and 22. God prepared the woman for the marriage. Thereafter, Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. She shall be called a woman because she was taken out of man. God's choice was accepted. God's plan, God's preparation was accepted. And today, marriage is a divine institution and not a social construct. Therefore, we are about to witness what God has instituted for man and woman to be united in holy matrimony. This marriage will be solemnized by Dr. Alexander Kurian and Brother Joe Philip will minister from the word of God. On behalf of both Thomas family and Samuel family, I welcome Dr. Alexander Kurian and Brother Joe Philip and all those who are involved in the various ministries of this marriage. I also extend a warm welcome to all the family and friends and fellow believers of both Pinto and Tinsi who have graced this occasion with your presence and also those who are witnessing virtually across the globe to this solemn ceremony. As we commence this ceremony, I would like to uh, also humbly request all those participants to follow the order of the program and make yourself available at your turn. I would like to recommend few housekeeping instructions as follows. It is recommended that you keep your mask on for the protection of self and, all, and each other. Please keep your cell phones and on silence or turned off throughout the program. Please refrain from any flash photography at all times as we have a live feed uh, for all those who are witnessing this event virtually. Please remain seated and follow the ushers' directions at all times during and after the event as they make themselves available at your service for any assistance. I once again welcome all to this occasion on behalf of both the families and let us prayerfully witness this holy matrimony of Pinto Samuel and Tinsey Thomas and may God bless us all. At this time, I request and welcome John Joseph Uncle to come forward and commit this time unto the Lord in prayer and seek his blessings. Shall we pray? Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we have uh, come into your presence this morning with a definite purpose. 
We thank you, Lord. The purpose is planned and directed by you. In the life of these two young people who have uh, expressed their willingness to be joined together in holy matrimony. Almighty God, we know and we accept that you are sovereign God. You command things happen. You make things beautiful for the occasions. And we thank you that you chose to do that this morning for these dear ones. A couple of days ago, Dallas went through treacherous weather conditions. But this morning, you have brought beautiful sunshine and rays of hope and joy into us. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to gather together this manner in this uh, beautiful sanctuary to celebrate the oath of uh, Pinto and Tinsley. Almighty God, we know that in the eternity past you had planned things for man. And we read from Genesis that you made man, created man, Adam, but you also saw that he was alone. And you commanded that it is not good that man to be alone, that he needs a partner, a helper. We thank you, Lord, that you have made man complete by bringing a woman unto him. And we, through that, we reflect on your plans and your heart regarding the families in this world. So you have ordained families by the union of a man and woman. And how wonderful it is if that is uh, between, a, between two believers. So this morning, Lord, we have uh, come together to witness and to celebrate the union of uh, Tinsi and Pinto. We heard uh, about their childhood, their upbringing, their faith and your trust, uh, their trust in you, Lord. And we praise uh, your name together along with them. Almighty God, that a beautiful family starts with the commitment to the Lord, keeping Lord Jesus as in the, in the center, asking his counsel, depend on him in their daily life. To that, as their well-wishers and uh, as their relatives and friends and church members, we commit Pinto and Tinsi unto that. This morning, Lord, we have come to witness this uh, beautiful ceremony. They are going to take uh, a pledge before the that Pinto will be a responsible husband and Tinsi will be a responsible wife. With that, they are going to start a, 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 a good Christian family unit today. We pray that you may bless them and illumine their heart in the next level and in that they will love each other, that they will grow in their understanding regarding each other, that they will grow in Christ Jesus together. To that end, we commit them to your grace and your keeping. Now, oh Lord, we know your plan, why you have brought this man and woman, Adam and Adam and Eve, and you have uh, made your heart very clear to the humankind that they may produce the God's offerings. 
We pray for them. Pray that you may bless them. Now, Lord, let, let us um, sit in your presence and witness this. Bless the service. Bless the servant who is going to minister your word and also the minister who is going to conduct the wedding. Everything may go well for your glory. In Jesus' name we are asking. Amen.
This morning I'm reading a scripture portion, Ephesians 5, 19 through 32. <clears throat> I'm reading 18 also. <clears throat> Ephesians 5, 19 through 32, reading 18 as well. <clears throat> and do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms, <clears throat> hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always <clears throat> and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Why submit to your own hus husbands as to the Lord, for the, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, <clears throat> and is himself its savior. Now if the church submit to Christ, so also wife should submit in everything to the husbands. Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church <clears throat> and gave himself up for her, that he might, uh, he might sanctify her, having cleansed, by her, cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot <clears throat> or wrinkle or any such thing that uh, she might be holy and without blemish. <clears throat> In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes, cherishes it, just as Christ does the church. Uh, because we are members of his body. body. <clears throat> Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. This, is, this mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. So the reading was from Ephesians 5, 19 through 32. Thank you.
It's a delight for uh, me and my family to be here this morning, especially uh, in relation to the wedding of Pinto and Tinsi. They are very dear to our hearts, and uh, it's always a joy uh, to see young people coming together in marriage. And uh, we are so delighted because we have been praying for them for many years. And our acquaintance with Tinsi goes a long way back as a teenager. Uh, we had the privilege of uh, teaching Sunday school and, uh, and also countless hours at our home uh, in youth meetings and also the mission uh, to Fiji. And it was a great time. And all through those years, I could see how she was able to grow in the things of God, mature to be a woman of God. And so we praise God for Pinto. Uh, we got to meet him last summer, and uh, it was a delight to meet him. And we, uh, we thank the Lord for bringing them together in his plan uh, and purpose. This morning, I want to uh, address not only Pinto and Tinsi, uh, but also every one of here. Um, I want to... Uh, give uh, a title for my address, uh, Recapturing the Essence of Biblical Marriage. By the way, my name is Joe Phillip. Uh, we are a close family acquaintance, and we go to the same assembly. A certain woman had been married four times. Her first husband was a banker, the second an actor, the third a minister, and fourth a funeral director. When someone asked her why she married men of such differing backgrounds, she answered, one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, and four to go. I hope you both are convinced in your heart as to why you are getting married. And I have full confidence that it is not for any of these reasons. Yet that shows us that we are living in a culture uh, at a time when God and his precepts are almost non-existent in the life of the people that we interact on a daily basis. Today, the traditional marriage and the Judeo-Christian lifestyle uh, is under attack uh, from so many sources, from the social media, from various organizations and governmental entities uh, dangers of being influenced by this culture is very real. Uh, their agenda is to influence the married life and the structure that God has established, the divine ordinance. They want to redefine it, destabilize it. And so there is a great danger of being uh, influenced by the culture in which we live, and especially the values and the principles of biblical marriage. You know, as New Testament believers, followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we should take our lives seriously, and not only our lives, but we should take God seriously in our life so that we give the rightful place for marriage in our lives. We have to recapture the essence of biblical marriage so that it gets the dignity, the honor, and the place it rightfully deserves from our marriages. You know, what I would like to bring before you, Pinto and Tinsi, and not only you, but all of you this morning, are three fundamental truths on which every marriage should be built and anchored. The first foundation truth is understanding that marriage is God ordained and instituted by God as part of the creative order. And so the emphasis that I want to bring before you on this first truth is that marriage is part of the creative order. It is part of the creation act of God. And so the first step in recapturing the essence of biblical marriage is to acknowledge that marriage is God-ordained. And it was mentioned so many times here this morning. What does that mean? It means that God designed marriage, that he planned it and instituted it for the very first man and woman that he created in the Garden of Eden. 
as part of that creative order. And so, Pinto and Tinsi, the definition of your marriage doesn't come from anyone else other than God himself. You know, you and I live in a culture where we are trying to redefine marriage, destabilize it so that what God has established would be broken. And may it be that our prayers for you this morning, that you would consider your marriage as God ordained. What a wonderful thought that is, that God has an intimate part in bringing you both together in this manner. It's not a secular thing, but it's a sacred ordination. It has its origin and operation in God himself. You see, when we read the creation narrative in Genesis chapters 1 and 2, it is interesting to note that after every day of creation, God had a benediction. He said, it is good. Whatever God created was good. But only in reference to man's creation that he said, it is not good that man should be alone. And there was a deficiency in man according to God's perspective. There was something missing. There was something lacking. And so what did God do? He said, I will make him a helper comparable to him. And that is exactly what God has done for Pinto. God has made someone comparable for you through Tinsi. And so God took the initiative to compensate this deficiency in man by creating from Adam with his own hands this wonderful creature called woman. And God brought her to him. And what was the expression of Adam? This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She called woman because she was taken out of man. And so the climax, and this is what I want to bring before you, the climax of God's creative work culminates not in the creation of the majestic universe with billions of galaxies, though it marvels the cosmologies. And as we gaze into the heavens, we see the, the majestic glory of God's creation. But that's not it. It's not even the creation of man, though he is so complex in his design and functionalities that we are still discovering the magnificence of God's creation of man. But the culmination is in the sacred and supernatural union of the man and the woman that God created, Adam and Eve. And they became one flesh as husband and wife. That is where God's creation culminated in the joining of two hearts together. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, we read, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. They shall become one flesh. This is where the creative order ended. And so what does that mean? You see, you have to step back and ask this question. Why did God create such a majestic universe in the first place? And in it, a speck of dust called the earth with its beautiful landscape and life, one must arrive at the conclusion that it was so that God could introduce the first man and woman in their sacred union so that that order could be magnified and dignified in the institution of marriage. You see, God created the whole universe so that he can unveil a man and a woman joined in holy matrimony. Isn't that wonderful? And that is exactly what we are going to see this morning. God himself is going to join these two hearts as he did in the Garden of Eden. It is still his work. Amen. What a gracious thing it is. So, Pinto and Tinsi, you both are entering into a divine institution that is of the highest honor and glory. 
bestowed by God for your ultimate enjoyment and for the glory of God. The second foundational truth is understanding that marriage is God covenanted and regulated by God in the scriptures. And this is where we sometimes don't really get the significance of marriage. And so the second step in recapturing the essence of biblical marriage is to acknowledge that marriage is a covenant made before God. You see, God's dealing throughout the human race has been through a concept called covenant. This is foreign to the world. A similar thing that the world might say or come close to is a contract where two parties come together and sign and they have things that they have to fulfill and if one of them breaks, the contract is broken. And that's how many families take marriage. It's a, just a legal contract. It's a piece of paper that they signed. My dear brothers and sisters, Pinto and Tinsi, it is more than a piece of paper that you would sign. It is a covenant. And so what is a covenant? It's basically an agree agreement between two parties, and at the center of that agreement is a sacred promise. There's a sacred promise that you are making between each other. It's an unbreakable promise for life before God and witnesses. In Malachi chapter 2, verse 14, it's an interesting passage right there. We read, because the Lord has been witness between you and the wife of your youth, with whom you have dealt treacherously, yet she's your companion and your wife by covenant. Implying that marriage is brought together by a covenant and a covenant of God. My dear friends, it is not simply a piece of paper by the civil authorities when two people decide they want to get together. Moreover, the Lord Jesus himself, as he was on this earth, said that the unifier, the one who brings two people together, is God himself, which should create within us a sense of reverence as we enter into marriage Therefore, what God has joined, not man, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Shortly, you both are going to exchange vows. And our dear servant is going to help you in that. But it is not he who is going to join you together. It is God himself who is going to join you. And in his own way, He's going to bring his invisible hands and bring these two hearts and minds in a wonderful union that you and I can never bring together. You see, Pinto, you are brought up in a different culture, in a different place, in a different family. Your thoughts, your mind may be different. And Tinsi was brought up in a different culture. But the one that brings you together is the sovereign God of the universe and he will bring your hearts and your minds together. And so what does that mean? Marriage is God covenanted. We are subjected to the sovereign God over marriage and his authority over it. You see, the terms and conditions of the covenant for the husband and the wife, especially for you both, to execute on a daily basis is not left up to you. You don't make the rules because the covenant is from God. It's not the 50-50 policy or some other policy that you come up with. It is God's policy regulated by God in the scriptures. This is what should guide your marriage. When you struggle, seek God and seek his principles. The commandments of God are what to regulate your marriage and the precepts from the scripture. And so, Pinto and Tinsi, you should never forget the fact that the one unifying you together is God himself. And so you can rest assured 
that the Almighty God, the one who brought the whole universe into existence with the power of his word, is the same one who is bringing your hearts together. What a wonderful thought that is. And all of you that are married maybe 5, 10, 15 years ago, or 20 or 50 years ago, what a moment that was for us when our hearts were joined together by the hands of God. May that assure you to press on in the struggles of life. The third foundational truth is understanding that marriage is God-honored and illustrated by God through the church. The third step in recapturing the essence of biblical marriage is to acknowledge that marriage is honoring to God because it is designed by him, it's planned by him, it's initiated by him, and it is blessed by him. Moreover, it speaks of a more excellent illustration of love. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, we read, marriage is honorable among all. It is something that we should elevate to the highest. As we look at the first truth, it is the culmination of God's creation. And so it should be looked at and considered with the highest honor and dignity. The Apostle Paul reveals this great mystery concerning Christ and the church. In Ephesians, the passage that we just read this morning, verses 31 and 32, for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is how the creative narrative in Genesis chapter 2 ended. Remember that? And the Apostle Paul takes that, and now he says, this is a great mystery. And I speak concerning Christ and the church. And so, Pinto and Tinsi, your marriage should be a representation of this more excellent illustration of love that the Father has shown towards people like us. And what is this illustration of love? It speaks of a wonderful love story that began in the heart of the eternal Father, where he wanted to find for his beloved son, the eternal son, a bride from among us. Isn't that a, a wonderful love story? And what did the father do? He sent his beloved son, the delight of his heart, into this world, not to find the very best among mankind because there was none. The scripture says we have all sinned and fallen short of God's glory. There is none righteous, not even one. There was not even one who sought after God's glory. Yet the hearts of the father and the son was focused on you and me. He reached out in grace and mercy. You know, this marriage is going to be consummated by vows that they exchange but this marriage between the son and the bride is not as simple as that. It cost his life blood. He purchased his bride, not by simple words that says, I love you. It cost him, why? Because he left the glory of heaven. He laid down that. He became a man, and not only a man, but a servant, so that he can fully demonstrate to us how much he loves his bride. What an illustration of God's love. And that is what you are responsible for illustrating to all the people that you come across, that you both together would be a simple, an illustration of that great love that Christ has for the church. What an amazing love story. All of you are here this morning. You didn't walk in here randomly, but you all came because of an explicit invitation from Pintua and Tinsi and their parents. You are all valuable because you are here handpicked and you, are come, and you have come here because of that invitation 
to see the union of Pinto and Tinsi. But I want to remind you of a more grander wedding that is going to take place. Remember the illustration that I mentioned between the son and the bride. The eternal father has set a date when his son is going to take the church as his bride. And what a glorious moment that would be, the height of God's demonstration of love, the reason why he created the whole universe, the reason why he created each one of you. But my question is, have you answered, responded to the invitation that the Father has given to you? The scripture says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The greatest thing that you can do today for Pinto and Tinsi is to answer the call, the invitation to a much more grander wedding. And you have the privilege to become the bride of the greatest man, the sovereign God of the universe. And forever you shall be in that glorious state. And so as I conclude, Pinto and Tinsi acknowledge that marriage is God ordained. Second, acknowledge that marriage is God covenanted. And thirdly, acknowledge that marriage is God honored. May God's blessing be upon you. May God bring your hearts together in marriage. May your life be an example of that great illustration of God's love. May God bless you and all of you. Thank you.
Shall we pray? <clears throat> Lord our God, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before you have formed the uh, mountains, and even be well before you formed the earth and the worlds, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thank you, Lord, for bringing all of us together this morning from far and near in order to bear witness and participate in the wedding of dear Pinto and Tinsi. As these two distinct individuals who were born and brought up in different homes and in the two different countries are going to be united in holy matrimony, we thank you that it is the triune God who has brought them together. As we were reminded at the outset, uh, even at the beginning of humanity, the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. And therefore, he created Eve as a suitable helpmeet for the first man, Adam. In the same manner, thank you, Lord, that it pleased thee to bring together these two individuals as suitable help me to each other. We thank you, Lord, for the life and the testimony of both Pinto and Tensi. Uh, in diverse times, you gave them the grace from above to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal savior and to walk in accordance with thy word. Uh, we, at this time, Commit them to your care as they are about to step into a covenant relationship with each other as husband and wife. We pray that heavenly blessings may be poured upon them lavishly. Lord, it is our prayer that in the coming days they may be guided by you, they may be instructed by you, they may be counseled by you in every step of their way. If you're coming to Aries, Lord, we pray that uh, they may be able to build up a home where the name of Jesus Christ is honored and the children of God are welcomed. Uh, be with them and help them abundantly, Lord. At this time, we remember and pray for the rest of the uh, ceremony, the rest of the services, particularly we commit thy servant, uh, Brother Alexander Kurian, to thy hand the needed grace may be uh, given to him abundantly so that even through this service, the name of Jesus Christ is honored and lifted up. Uh, be with us throughout the rest of the service and help us. Help us to enjoy your divine presence and guidance. We ask all these things in the blessed and the sweet name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Philip, for 
that timely exhortation and instruction from the Word of God. We all are excited, we all are happy, and we know that the bride and the groom, they are overjoyed, they are even more excited. You know, a thousand mile journey also begins with the first step. And that is what is going to happen now. They are going to take a journey in their life. As husband and wife, eventually as a family in the will of the Lord, and not only two of them walking with the Lord Jesus Christ. Christian marriage is always like a triangle, the husband, wife, and God. That is what we have been listening. They have brought incredible spiritual strength into this marriage. Those of us who know Pinto and Tinsi, we know that, you know, that they have built a very strong spiritual foundation in their life. You know, during the counseling time, Tinsi was so excited to hear all the wonderful counsel. But what about Pinto? He was more interested in my exposition and explanation and the expository analysis which I gave to some of the passages and he was busy writing it down. I don't know whether he listened to the counsel and the counseling. He was more interested in Bible study. I praise God for that. He wanted to know the wonderful truths which I have been trying to share with them. And I reminded him that he doesn't have to pay me, it's all free. <laughs> and he was very happy. So, you know, they are a wonderful people and uh, we are here to bless this occasion and we know the Lord is going to join you. Just one verse, Romans chapter 12. Verses 1 and 2, very famous. And verse 2 ends like this, that you will prove the will of God. Whenever I think of Tinsi, I knew that. Uh, that's very true of Pindo too. But we all knew Princey, you know, for the last many years, ever since her uh, teenage or childhood. She has been praying and waiting that the Lord may bring the right partner in her life. She was committed to doing the will of God. I know that for sure. And that is what she wanted to do. Wait for God's time, God's purpose. Good, better, best, never let it rest until your good is better and your better best. So she wanted to make the good better and the better best. And I'm sure that is exactly what Pindo also has been waiting. So the first step begins. Would you please arise for the exchange of your vows? You know, the Romans chapter 12, verse 2 tells, the will of God is good and acceptable, pleasing to God, and it is perfect. The word is telos, perfect, that which completes, that which perfects. So, God is, since they have sought the will of God in their marriage, God is completing, perfecting God's will in their life. That's what I believe. I call it telic purpose. One more good word for you to remember, okay? Yeah. That is, the, this is the moment in which God's telic purpose is being fulfilled in their life. First of all, let me ask Pinto. With confident trust, 
as you are now ready to accept each other as husband and wife, you will acknowledge this decision of hearts by the declaration of intent and the exchange of your vows. Pinto, will you take Tinsi to be your wedded wife, to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of mat matrimony? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health and forsaking all others? Keep yourself only unto her, so long as you both shall live. To the beautiful bride now. Tinsi, will you take Pinto to be your wedded husband, to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health and forsaking all others? Keep yourself only unto him so long as you both shall live. Since, Pin since Pinto and Tinsi after careful consideration and in the fear of God, have freely and deliberately have chosen each other as partners in this holy estate and know of no just cause why they should not be so united. In visible token thereof, may I please join your hands. You may now repeat your vows after me. First the groom. I, Pinto, take you, Tinsi, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish from this day forward, till death do us part. And there too, before God and these witnesses, I give you my sacred pledge. I, Tinsi, take you, Pinto, to be my wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish from this day forward till death do us part and there too before God and these witnesses I give you my sacred pledge. Now the next part, both of you repeat together after me. What therefore? God has joined together let not man separate. Amen. Let us pray and do you join with me as you pray and commit them to the Lord's mighty hands. Loving God, our Heavenly Father, we wholeheartedly believe that Pinto and Tinsi are coming together at this very moment they have exchanged their vows and they have taken their pledge and we pray that as they have become husband and wife, we lovingly come and commit them to the everlasting arms. Underneath are the everlasting arms and we know that those arms are the nail pierced arms. The Lord Jesus Christ who loved us and gave himself for us he is the Lord of their life. He is the God of their life. And we thank thee that as a couple they are committed and dedicated to his Lordship. We thank you for bringing them together at this very telic moment in their life as your purposes are being fulfilled. Pray that thou may stretch forth your sovereign hand of blessing and bless them at this very moment immeasurably and we pray that even in the days to come, thou may lead them every step of the way, that the aroma of the Lord Jesus Christ and their Christian testimony may bless their families, their communities, their friends, their, in their place of work, that everywhere there may, they may radiate the glory 
of their Lord Jesus Christ. Continue to bless them in their life, in every aspect of their life. Pray that thy abundant blessing may be granted to them. We thank thee that thou hast done this, and we rejoice in you. Thou art a great and wonderful God. The mountains shall depart, and the hills will vanish. But my covenant faithfulness will not depart from thee. We thank you that thou art a covenant-making God and a covenant-keeping God, and thou art ever be faithful to your people. We praise you and thank you and worship you in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I would just like to read a, a couple of passages without comments. A very important passage, Ephesians chapter 5, has already been read here. I would like to read from Colossians chapter Colossians chapter 3, a couple of verses. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you, with all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Whatever you do, in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him, to God the Father. Wives, be subject to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be embittered against them. Do not be bitter towards them. Another passage in 1 Peter chapter 3. In the same way, you wives be submissive to your own husbands, so that even if any of them are disobedient to the word, they may be won without a word by the behavior of their wives. As they observe your chaste and respectful behavior. Verse 7, you husbands, in the same way, live with your wives in an understanding way or according to knowledge, as with someone weaker, since she is a woman, and show her honor as a fellow heir, heir of the grace of life, so that your prayers will not be hindered. About the permanence of the marriage covenant, from Malachi chapter 2. The Lord has been a witness between you, and the wife of your youth. She is your companion and your wife by covenant. For I hate divorce, says the Lord, the God of Israel. Another passage from the very lips of our Lord Jesus Christ about the permanence of the marriage covenant. Some Pharisees came to Jesus, testing him and asking, is it, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason at all? And he answered and said, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. By the authority vested in me as a minister of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and his church, I now pronounce Pinto and Tinsey, husband and wife, according to the laws of the state of Texas and the ordinance of God, in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, what God has joined together, and let not man separate, and the people of God said, Amen.
Please pray with me as I pray for this new couple. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful location, uniting Pindo and Tinsi in holy matrimony. Lord, we realize it is your doing and marvelous in our eyes. Lord, we thank you for uh, blessing them and uniting them together. Lord, we thank you for their families who invested in their lives. Father, we pray this morning that every turn they would look to you for help, for comfort, for strength, for protection, and for provision. May they glorify in the choices that they make and the ministries they will involve themselves in. Father, I humbly pray that you would use them to draw others to yourself. May they live with a passion May others be attracted because of their love for you. Lord, we pray that the home that they are going to build, there will be joy and contentment in their home. Pray that those who come in and go out would be blessed. Pray that they would have a servant's heart, that they would keep each other's interests ahead of their own. Lord, I pray for Pindo that he would be like Paul who said, follow me as I follow Christ. Pray for Tinsi that she would be a Proverbs 31 woman. Lord, we humbly pray that you would bless their lives together. Bless their union Lord, we pray that you would shine your face upon them, grant them thy favor. We once again commit them to your care and your keeping. We pray that you would richly bless them. May they be passionate about serving you. We love you, we thank you. We ask all these things in the name of thy son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the love of God the Father, and the eternal communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all and especially with Pinto and Tinsi, now and for evermore. Amen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my delightful privilege to present to you for the first time this distinguished couple, Mr. and Mrs. Pinto Samuel. Praise be to God, and thank the Lord for helping us thus far in arranging and solemnizing this wedding, and we are really grateful to his blessings. We want to especially thank uh, the Legacy Church of Christ to honor us with this place and its services <clears throat> for this event, and we especially thank Brother Todd and Dwayne, the building managers, and the AV team, Brother Andrew, Kirk, and Brian, to take their time out and uh, really help us this morning. Uh, please be seated uh, and wait for the ushers to guide you out by row. And as you exit out uh, to the building, you all know where to go. The reception is at the Hearst Conference Center at 1601 Hearst, uh, Campus Drive, Hearst. And uh, the reception is arranged there. Parking is free. And follow the signs for the parking between in the building as well as on the floor levels. There is the elevators that will guide you to the main conference hall. Please enjoy the time of fellowship as they have uh, prepared appetizers and snacks for you to enjoy the fellowship and the time. I would request those, the family members, to please be seated here uh, in the front as they wait for the sessions of the pitchers. Please enjoy your time, and I will request ushers to guide them out row by row and as they exit. Thank you all. <clears throat> 